Good morning from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry. That lovely little building over there was built a couple of years ago to become my potting shed and or you know garden shed. And for many years I did use it as such. Uh, it's about a 10 by 12. It's just a perfect size for a potting shed. But I found myself more and more coming over to the porch where I had the nice open air and working and doing my potting chores on the porch. And this has become my permanent potting section. And um, I've got a little cupboard here, which is just really fantastically convenient because it has so many drawers and cubby holes. You can put small tools and things in inside those drawers and cupboards. You can put your books in here. I've got seeds. I've got markers. I've got little, I've got plant food, fertilizers, string. Everything you need can go in a small cupboard like this. And the best thing about it is it's green. You might notice that I like green. Also underneath, if you have tubs, you can put your soils and mixtures, your watering cans. And right here I have some sweet peas growing in tubs in the shade under the porch because it's going to get very hot here pretty soon and they will not like that. So, and then if you can get a little area to stack your pots or maybe start roots and rhizomes, these are, hmm, phloxes and dahlias I have going on in these pots. Another cupboard which was very convenient to use is this old pantry cupboard. It's got about four shelves in it and I can get all sorts of items in there as well. So if you have a section in your garden with a little bit of shade, you don't need much room. You just need a cupboard, a work area. When I want to work on here, I just clear this off and use this little enamel um, countertop to pot things. It's just very convenient and I think it's very charming too. So, since I don't use my potting shed anymore, I do have another use for it. And I thought that I would take you over there and show you what I actually do with the potting shed. So let's walk over here. This is where the basket garden is. And we have this lumpy, bumpy brick walkway. It's the only way I know how to lay brick is unevenly. <laughs> but like most things, I kind of like things that are a little bit off. Um, over here, before we go in, over here we have another little duck. I know you, you can't see her because it's dark in there. She's sitting on duck eggs and I'm going to let her keep sitting on them because she's a khaki Campbell. It's a little brown duck. She's really pretty and I think she actually might hatch them. Most of the duck eggs never hatch. So we open our bright red door. Might be a little bit too bright. And enter what is not my studio. It is actually my very small shop. And this is where I keep much of my finished artwork. Oftentimes we get people that come over here, um, gardeners, gardening clubs, and people that just want to buy a book or a piece of artwork and this is where I'm able to take them because then they can see everything all at once and so I'll show you what I've got in here my one of my art forms here is called Schirrenschnitte which means scissor snipping in German and I've done this for 30 years this is a garden piece it's a painted paper cutting if you're not familiar with paper cutting just look it up and you'll find all kinds of things about it. It originated in Germany and Switzerland and came to America with the Pennsylvania Dutch. So this piece is a lot more of a Pennsylvania Dutch style. And I sell the originals but I also sell the prints. I also have a line of greeting cards. Hoplong greetings of course. Just little five by seven cards, blank on the inside. Over here is another form of paper cutting. Um, this, I call them paper gardens, and they are paper cuttings 
mixed together, made into flowers and birdhouses and beehives and trees and cottages and little silhouettes with sheep and birds and rabbits. And I create those and then I put them under glass. And those are my paper gardens. I really like this one. Got a dove coat on the top, with little birds inside, and a beautiful garden underneath. Over here are pin cushions. Normally I have a lot more pin cushions than this, but I stitch, and so I love pin cushions. I always have. Many, many people do stitch. Many um, needlework is a very, very popular and wonderful art form. But these little pin cushions are topped with little felted rabbits that I make. Oh, I also do a lot of animal garden prints because I'm actually working on a garden book that will one day be finished. It's taking a very long time. What with everything else I have to do. And here are the Hop Along Hollow folk, which I introduced you to a couple months ago when I showed you my badger, my raccoon, and Drusilla P. Possum, who came home from the gallery, and I was really quite glad that she didn't sell because I really wanted to have her back in the family. So these are needle felted with sheep's wool, alpaca, and uh, some of them are partially stitched with mohair. That's what they used to make teddy bears with back in the old days. Mohair teddy bears. So these have the look of antique toys and vintage creatures. I do mostly woodland animals, but I also do cats. This is Milo. And here are a couple others. Cats are really difficult to do on the faces, in, in my opinion, because cats have a flat face, but they also have a profile. I have a real hard time with cats, but I don't have a hard time with birds. absolutely love making birds. Birds come in so many shapes and colors and sizes. And doesn't everybody love birds? So these are my needle felted birds. Up here on the shelf. I know the light isn't very good. They're probably in the shadows. We do need to improve the lighting in here. Here are more paper gardens. A couple little mice with my new book, Pippity Trimble and the Cunning Green Stranger, which just happens to be about a mouse. A mouse who's also a gardener. This is Beatrix, and Beatrix was a sheep that I had for many years. And she passed away last year, and I wanted to immortalize her in wool, so this is Beatrix. She's completely articulated. She moves in every direction. And there's Matilda and Alice, my geese. And more little rabbits. And here, these are called scratched eggs. That They are from my geese and my ducks. I just blow out the uh, yolks, clean them up, dye them, and then I engrave them with a dental tool. And I call them scratched eggs. In the old days, they scratched these with the tip of a very sharp knife. Um, they also were Pennsylvania Dutch art form. And here in the corner, probably my most favorite thing of all are my books, because that's what I love to do, write and illustrate storybooks. Storybooks for newborn to 90. I don't call them children's books, I call them storybooks because I really think that everybody can enjoy a well-illustrated book. This is my newest book. It just came out. Pippity Trimble and the Cunning Green Stranger. Pippity is a little mouse gardener who finds a praying mantis in her garden. 
At first she's rather delighted with this praying mantis because he's doing her a lot of favors by eating her aphids and her earwigs. But she soon discovers that he's going to become a very big nuisance. So this is a very funny story. But this is my final use. <laughs> I don't think this will ever be a potting shed again. It's too much fun as a shop. So, what do you think? <laughs> I think I'd rather pop my plants on the porch anyway and just come in here for a bit of relaxation with my little friends right there on the table. So that's the potting shed that isn't. <laughs> Here in Oblong Hollow. <laughs> oh, be quiet.